was in West Oakland, California When I found out about a piece of me All this solitude around, I'm starting to see When I'm alone, the shit I think I come from the part of town I talk about But talk to outline if you bling I can't go outside today That shine of fade and that go along with my peace All the energies and entities And people that just want shit from me I can't make this up The luxuries of being broke as fuck But escaping Not to sound ungrateful about the blessings But my best days are all in my past I've been working like a slave Proud to say now look but I am like bad And then in the Zedlar Went and got a wristwatch Probably never respond Anytime I risk my life Flagging out a TikTok Watch it all on TikTok I'm willing to bet it all I'm willing to risk my life And then in the Zedlar Went and got a wristwatch Probably never respond Anytime I risk my life I can have a TikTok, watch it all on TikTok. I'm willing to bet it all, I'm willing to risk my life. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I was in Bronx, New York when I decided this the type of life that I live. I made sacrifices, what the fuck you writing for? You know you do not give. I got right back on my feet, I fell face first the first time, I'll admit I did. Took a couple years for me to feel like I did not fall upon all deaf ears. Niggas went away, but the call that fear. At least I got a place for if all else fails. Nigga, I went on a date, told a call that live. I told her lose my line, they don't call back here. Yeah, I'm about to lose my mind, I got all that care. Hey, listen to me rhyme, can't hold back tears. Gamble on a life. But it won't be fair Turn it off with some sand in a beach chair And then in the set block Went and got a wristwatch Probably never respond Anytime I risk my life Flagging out a TikTok Watch it all on TikTok I'm willing to bet it all I'm willing to risk my life And then in the set block Went and got a wristwatch Probably never respond Anytime I risk my life Flagging out a TikTok Watch it all on TikTok. I'm willing to bet it all. I'm willing to risk my life. What's up, everybody? Welcome. My name is Jesse Quigley. Sitting across from me in Seattle, Washington is Jay Purcell, the founder of Signal Radio. Hello, everybody. Welcome along. Go check out the latest episode of The Drop on YouTube. Oh, yeah. There's some latest good music coming out. Um, but first things first, this is Rooster Grooves. Mm-hmm. It's Jay and Jesse. We're talking about an artist called Saba. Yes. Out of Chicago. Yes. Rapper. Yes. Songwriter. Yes. Artist. Producer? Did you say producer? I did not. He's a, he's a producer. <laughs> as well. As well as things you just said. Yeah. Yes. So really cool guy. Yeah. Um, seems like a really down to earth, chill, open minded, mm-hmm. mentally yeah. kind of guy. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and he's making like really good music. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of b- bursting onto the scene. Yeah. I feel like we're bursting as he's bursting. Yeah. Or mm-hmm. we're, we're talking about him as he's going through his burst. Right. Yeah. Because I'd never heard of him until you nothing at all your suggestion this week yeah yes uh nothing at all yeah uh i might have seen him with Mm -hmm. chance the rapper yeah on stephen colbert a long time ago 2015 apparently i think it was his first tv performance Mm -hmm. saba but yeah i've definitely heard of chance the rapper yeah so Um, they're kind of coming coming from the same scene yeah in Chicago. chicago yeah yeah and uh it's like there's a bit of a scene right out there of uh different artists blowing up um I think Saba was saying, yeah, Chance the Rapper being one of them. Mm-hmm. Mick Jenkins. Yeah, his name men- comes up. He a mentioned lot. another guy called Keith, I think. I'm not sure who that is. But like, yeah, I mean, these guys, some of these guys are like putting the the, the attention on Chicago a little bit mm-hmm. and uh, helping other artists like Saba come through. Although I haven't heard of him, but now I've heard of him. So there we go. <laughs> and, and I hope you're all the better for it because I think yeah. he's a really dope artist. Yeah. Um, and I think we can learn something from him. Yeah. From his production skills to the way that he thinks about, yeah. you know, bringing this stuff to yeah. life. And um, I think he's pretty introspective and he's like really, yeah. I don't know, tries to, he's authentic. Yeah, yeah. You know, I get, that's the word that I, I would, I would put on him. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something we'll get into, I think a yeah. little bit later on for sure. Yeah. But uh, Chicago yeah. born, his, his real name is Taj. 
mm-hmm. Malik Chandler. Yeah. I hope I'm pronouncing that okay. Born in 1994, right? Okay, yeah. Uh, in the Austin uh, neighborhood of west, mm-hmm. the west side of Chicago. I have not been out to Chicago. It's one of the places on my Oh, I got a DJ there. I got to get a ticket. Yeah, you got to get there first before me. <laughs> We're on a, yeah, a traveling yeah, race. Yeah. You got me in between Hawaii and New Orleans on this episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right? Crazy all over the place. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Um, he's, some of his influences are Outkast. Yeah, yeah. You know, Andre 3000 and Big Boy. Mm-hmm. Um, Bone Thugs and Harmony. Yeah. A uh, big one was Pharrell yep. and the Neptunes. Yep. Doing really cool stuff. I, um, yeah. He's a big fan of Kendrick. Yep. I know he says he wants to work with Kendrick one day. Yep. Um, Sade. Yep. Um, obviously, everybody in the world is inspired by Sade, yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah. It's uh, funny. He said about how she's just uh, kind of like, where is she? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw that. Uh, it's one of those things because she doesn't do collabs. She doesn't. I don't think she's been featured on another artist or done anything else with another artist. She's just, just mysterious. She's just so reclusive and you, we, she might come out of an album sometime. You don't even know. Just we'll drop any day. It's like, could come out of nowhere, yeah. It's very so, cool though. Yeah. I like I like that she does that. Yeah, yeah. And I do. We, we should talk about Sade one day. Maybe yeah. off air. She's a pretty big artist. We'll yeah. talk about yeah. that later off the air. Okay. <laughs> um, but we're talking about Saba and yeah. it is pronounced Saba. Yeah, I wasn't. I, I I initially felt Saba was the correct thing, and then I was like, "Is it Saba? No, but Saba seems right." I, yeah, I think that was what it was said in some interviews as well. So, um, and I I'm, I failed, but I don't know where that came from or what that means. Um, let me see. No, yeah, yeah, I didn't see that. Neither of us know. But just pass it up. No, <laughs> who cares? But he's had uh, since well, 2015, right? Was his first single that came out with chance the rapper mm-hmm. right angels and then since then he's had three of his own albums since 2016 yeah three full lengths a lot of eps a lot of singles mm-hmm. a lot of collabs uh a lot of collabs with sort of two other main groups that we'll talk about a little bit later pivot gang which is includes some of his family members and uh and the other one uh sage what was it called something sage um, I think you're right. I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll pull it up as we get to that yeah. part in my notes. How about that? Uh, or, or we could look, look it up right now. Ghetto Sage. Ghetto Sage. Yeah. Okay. okay. With No Name, who I've heard of No Name. She's mm-hmm. out of Chicago as well. Yeah. Same, same kind of scene. First time I saw her was on an NPR tiny desk. And then I liked that performance so much. I saw her play at a uh, Capitol Hall block party one year as well. She was on the main stage. Okay, nice. So I really like her flow uh, as a rapper and what she's saying as well. It's really interesting. But yeah, I mean, she, with Smino, her and Smino and Saba formed Ghetto Sage. Mm -hmm. And I think that came out at some point, was really big, and then people have been really clamoring for the next collaboration out of that as well, sort of thing. But yeah, I mean, he's basically just been a busy guy, right? He's just putting out all of this high level material um yeah and and yeah. Just pretty prolific um yeah. and we'll get into it later as we go to the early life type yeah. stuff um, but yeah. he's been making music for a long time yeah consistently yeah um i like that about this guy as well yeah just really likes to dive in and learn he's about learning and like going through the process of making music yeah um and seeing what he can learn from these different artists and his influences and how he can help himself achieve his goals through those ways that he learned definitely yeah. you know so very cool um Let's play a track. Yeah. Off of his first album we have loaded up. Bucket List. This track is called Photosynthesis. Nice. Now to the wristwatch, to the collar shirt tucked with the front part. Get out of adolescence when it go blossom. When your stars align, I hope it's no comet so far. It's oh yes, I made it alive. I wonder what size still in my mama house. 
The kids on my conscience now, cause they you dying and it's just more common now. Coming ground, stuck through it all like we common low, coming down high over life, or right under now. Summon and I'm in the pain of when I'm in doubt. High school, my head in the crown like I learned about. Oh, yes, I made it alive. It's your drive, hit it to paradise. In this moment of mine, I can't recognize. I see that the glare is bright. And with two compromise, I almost died. I doubt the water is red as mine. Project, uh, that was the name of the album, Bucket List Project, right? Mm-hmm. From Saba. Um, that was a track called Photosynthesis featuring Jean Du. Uh, I'm going to say. Very good. Du. Nice. Du. Uh, she's an artist out of Chicago as well. Um, that album featured a lot of collaborations, right? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, but, there was no name on that one. Right, yeah. And uh, wasn't the theme of that like. Well, we'll talk about it a little bit later, but the theme was literally bucket list, right? He was asking these people that featured to yeah, like that was talk kind of, about their bucket lists. Yeah, a little bit of, of the... Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I can't think of the word. Um, the, theme. Yeah, the theme of the, yeah. of the album, the concept. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, was a little bit behind that. So yeah. kind of ties it together. Very cool. Almost every song has a, um, a feature on it. Right. Another rapper or artist. Yeah, yeah. There's only a few that are just Saba. Like literally two or three songs on there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, very good stuff. I guess we could talk about it a little bit more when we get to that portion of his life. Yeah, yeah. But definitely. here we are now on Rooster Groove talking about Saba. Let's go back to the past. The Saba's past. early life. Yeah. Chicago. Yeah. Um, um, Sears Tower is there. Right. Looking over. They have a little pizza. And little Saba is born. Yeah. Yeah, had a little deep dish. <laughs> Walking down, it's a little windy. Right. And uh, yeah, so Saba's born. Someone told me the Windy City uh, gets its name because of the politicians. Oh, not the wind? And the, yeah, but mostly the politicians. Like, <laughs> really? Yeah, that's what someone told me. I, I met a randomly a guy outside of Bali the other day and he was from Chicago and he said that and yeah. What does that so, mean? Windy, like the politicians go with wh- however the wind's blowing that he, day? Yeah, or just... Blowing a lot of hot air, or okay, know, a lot of, a lot just of, blowing air, a lot of uh, bullshit. I yeah, think, I guess. Okay, that makes there. sense. Also, the home of like lots of uh, you know crime, right? Like all of the the classic. Is it Al Capone or someone like that? I'm just uh, no, I'm no. Just, I, I, I'm getting into the history of things that I don't know about. It right sounds now. <laughs> right to me. I don't know either, uh, but I do know. Yeah. I think the south yeah. side of Chicago is is known to be yeah. a little rough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a little. Um, I don't know. Not taken care of. Right. Yeah, not yeah. loved by the city yeah i don't so. know there's issues culture issues clashes yeah uh like i said i don't know what i'm talking about but it just is just from like pop culture 
right. from watching TV and stuff. <laughs> yeah. But he was born and grew up in a neighborhood called Austin, which um, I don't know too much about. It's on the west side, though. Mm -hmm. um, and he has a pretty musical family it's from the sounds of things. It sounds like his dad was like a neo soul like musician or something mm -hmm. um, who I think later Saba sort of like maybe like wrote some material based off of his dad's early sort of neo soul music and kind of infused that into some tracks. Oh, very cool. Um, I do know, I don't know too much about his family life, but he uh, picked up piano when he was seven years old. I think another one, it's probably like the default thing, right? That everyone, it, whether you turn into a musician or not, everyone gets piano lessons when they're a kid. It seems the most <laughs> consistent through, yeah. through all these different artists. Piano is the, yeah. The, a very good starting point for a lot of artists, it seems. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah, and it was um, getting into like, I think when he was a lot younger, he listened to Bone Thugs and, Thugs and Harmony. Mm -hmm. And he, he mentions them as like the biggest influence on him. Like when he first heard their music, he was like, oh, I have to make music now. And yeah, he, like, he said that was kind yeah. of a catalyst moment. Yeah. Where he, yeah, it kind of switched on in his head. Yeah. So I, I don't... I'm not super familiar with Bone Thugs and Harmony, but I guess he was saying like he learned harmony from them. Yeah. Patterns. Yeah. Um, like just general production. Yeah. Um, the cadence. Yeah. Of you know the drums and the beats. Yeah. yeah. And um, kind of most most importantly the feeling and the vibe. Yeah. Of like how to create that and then how to interweave lyrics into that to tell the story. Yeah. But kind of he's very much the vibe first, the feeling of what the song is giving you as a listener. Yeah. Which is cool. And the authenticity as well. He said, like, he hadn't heard, he, he doesn't think there's anyone that makes music like Notorious. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Notorious B.I.G.'s in there, but like Bone Thugs and Harmony, yeah. Right. Like, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, and it was just like, I think shortly after then that his granddad helped him, helped Sabo buy a four track, um, four track club. Yeah, recorder, four track club, and piano. Four yeah. track. If you want to right. be a musician, you got to get a piano and a four track. Exactly. Yeah. Immediately. <laughs> and um, and so he was. Uh, yeah. Do you know any anything else about his childhood before we? Um. Think, not uh, not early childhood. I got basically the same stuff that you, you already uh, mentioned. Mm. And then basically, I I can move until he's thirteen. Yeah. So uh, like high school. That's when he mm -hmm. sort of starts uh, putting together mix mixtapes, right? Yeah, um, well, I mean, let me back up even one sec, because when yeah. he was 13, I guess he was in a, a group. Okay. And he said, I mean, yeah, he was like a rap group, and he was the engineer and producer. Oh, cool. And so this is where he started to, to learn a lot of the specifics of how to create tracks. Right. Using a computer or the four track. Cool, yeah. Um, and that's where he got some initial experience. Right, yeah. yeah. So, and um, But yeah. then, yeah, moving into high school. Yeah, and then he was just sort of i don't know what his music was sounding about at that point whether it was like really heavily sampled mm -hmm. um but he was definitely rapping already at that stage i think and yeah and just handing out uh tapes in the hallway of his high school to mm -hmm. like the other kids which is a genius move and i'm like now kicking myself all of these years later that i didn't just hand out cassette tapes of my band when i was in school and just like, give them you know, away here it is yeah why not it's like the best way to Get, get his stuff out there really like, i think not too <laughs> late not too yeah. late yeah yeah especially if he's gonna start doing shows around then as well like i don't know that's, that's just very cool i know but i mean very he's very young yeah, but yeah. He, he obviously like had his head on screwed right or whatever yeah, yeah and he's able to you know just have the wherewithal to create music and to give it to people and just be yeah, really yeah. present in yeah. what he's trying to do with intention definitely yeah. and i think it's, it's impressive how young he was and how you know powerful he was as he was getting started so early yeah yeah and it's a theme that's like continued i think in everything he's done um throughout his musical career um but uh yeah he went to st joseph's which which is his high school um but yeah and he left nice. there when he was 16 then he went to college i think he had a scholarship but then his scholarship ran out and so he just dropped out of college um, but all throughout this whole time, he was starting to do shows, like early like rap shows, where he'd get paid like fifty dollars a show. He say, he Bruh. said that kind of like that kind of like rode for a while. Um, but he said he just put it all back into making music until at a point later on in his career where he said he got enough money that he was just buying Jordans all the time, all the Jordans sneakers that he wanted when he was a kid. He like suddenly could have afford and. 
I, said he did that for about three months and realized he had to stop doing that because it's just getting crazy. It's too much. <laughs> I did see him wearing a lot of Jordans in any pictures yeah. that I saw. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I mean, yeah. at, at some point in here, I know his granddad helped him get that four track recorder. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just want to point out his granddad. Yeah. Yeah. Because I guess, you know, and then um, I guess also he, I'm not sure exactly what the story is, but mm -hmm. I guess he started making this music in his grandma's basement. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I did see something about that. Yeah. Put together a little studio. Yeah. And then he would also invite other like people that he was collaborating with to come mm -hmm. over and, and like make tracks, basically. Make yeah. Beats he, he was and, running yeah. a studio, basically. Yeah. 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 Um, and he, he was already being a producer as a team. Yeah. So just impressive. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. So he released several mixtapes. One was the comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And that's what kind of started gaining traction when he was in high school. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, yeah, I guess he just moved on from there. Get comfortable was another one. 2012. Comfort um, and, and get comfortable. Yeah. Okay. And comfort zone was 2014, apparently. Um, and, and then he was like getting to know Chance the Rapper and was on hit one of his mixtapes as well, I think. Yeah. So he like, did a couple yeah, of collaborations yeah. with other artists in the same similar scene. And I think yeah. at that point, Chance was also on the way up. Yeah. He was kind of a nobody still at that time. Because this is like relatively recent. <laughs> yeah. No, exactly. <laughs> if you think about it, it's like 2014. Because I know like I saw an interview with Chance the Rapper's like manager. Mm -hmm. who's basically was just a really close friend of his and uh chance the rapper's dad did something pretty high up like he worked with obama like helping obama to get elected oh. and then maybe worked in the government as well mm. um and there was the, and so there was like his dad was like helping to like put a lot of investment or find people to finance like chance the rapper's career kind okay of thing. so like he got like this heavy helping hand from this and this is yeah around the time obama was getting well re-elected right second term yeah, or, second, yeah second time yeah um and yeah and i mean saba knowing him as well and because chance has been really good it seems about featuring lots of other upcoming artists around yeah. him uh we did some work on signal with a guy called alex wiley um we did some pod, early podcasts with him on Signal. He knows, he's featured on a Chance the Rapper track as well. Oh, very cool. Alex Wiley's out of Chicago. And yeah, it just seems it's really great, like, um, I guess, to be sort of in a scene where someone's doing really well, but they're helping to put on other people. And mm -hmm. I think that's something Saba said as well. It was like in the early days, there was a lot of that hustle. It was a lot of promoting each other yeah, and showing up to each other's shows put, uh, featuring like, each other on the recordings on the albums and you know yeah being there for like, each other supporting each yeah, other yeah you know kind of like like physically going to shows and yeah, yeah. listening to music and you know production tips and stuff and learning how to create yeah, yeah. you know bouncing ideas off of the people in the scene yeah sharing the knowledge sharing the wealth mm -hmm. the wealth of knowledge yes <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah uh, I feel like that's kind of like how it all sort of started to really pop off for him. And, mm -hmm. and then obviously the, out of that, there's a lot of shows with these different artists and um, Sabo was getting to start to perform. Although he did say his very first time on stage, I think, was in a school play playing a lawyer. Okay. He's, I didn't hear yeah, that. He said he doesn't know if he can act or not, but he feels like he killed it. So. <laughs> If he feels good, it must uh, have been good. There was another thing that was like a dance competition, apparently, that he said there's a VHS tape somewhere. His mum definitely has a copy of this VHS tape. So those were actually his first two times on stage before he went on stage and rapped. Right so on. Acting and dancing. So, so he, um, again, so, more experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You no, know, for yeah. the performance aspect. Yeah, definitely. So he's doing everything right up until his, his teens. He, he hasn't stopped doing things right. No. Until today. Yeah, That's yeah. what we're saying. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we're talking about like 2014 time. Yeah. That's two years before his first album drops. Right. So I, I, I'm just kind of speculating. I think he starts working on these tracks. Yeah. And he's thinking about like a bigger project and he really wants to make his debut yeah. and starts to be, build that. Yeah, yeah. And that kind of culminates into the 16, 2016 release uh, bucket list project. Yeah. Which we opened up a track um, with. Yeah. Or, or the last track we played was from Bucket List. Photosynthesis, yeah um and yeah that is a uh, self-released album he's actually mm -hmm. completely still independent self-released although i think he has a team now helping him you know yeah i'm sure but in terms of record label stuff it was a self-done thing impressive again um 
And yeah, I, I don't know too much else about this other than like we kind of said, I think the thematic concept behind it was to kind of, I guess the lyrical inspiration that he gave to people that came to collaborate on it was like, think about bucket list as a concept and like mm -hmm. what, you know, there's some things that you want to do kind of thing. Yeah, what like, do you want to experience? How do yeah. you want to feel? Yeah. And let's put that into this album. Yeah. And you know, it's like at the end of that track as well, we heard like a clip of someone just mm -hmm. talking their bucket list. Like, I'm not sure who that was actually. I should find that. I should we should, yeah. That. yeah. I'm sure it was one of those yeah. featured artists. Yeah. Um, but then Sawa was like, like late, late or asked, I think recently asked about, you know, you know, about that concept now, bucket list kind of thing. And he, he's, he's like, he feels like it changes from year to year to him. Um, and like, he also said like, sometimes like the goals are different, you know, um, mm -hmm. this kind of bleeds a little bit into his mindset a little bit, but sure, that's um, okay. like how he sort of sees, um, like he's, he talks about the ceiling a lot, you know, in terms of like, um, there is no ceiling really on, on anything like goals and that, like he's just trying, he says that he's trying to just do the best he can with the music or go as far as what he, even he can imagine at the moment, like mm -hmm. just work hard at it and go far, hard on it. And then not really, you know, sort of doing anything for success. He says success, does, there's no, no sort of like clear flag or marker of what success looks like. Mm -hmm. You know, some people have that concept of like, that's the, that's the bucket list. That's the ceiling. That's the goal. It's like, if I reach here, then I've made it kind of thing. I've, I've reached enlightenment. Yeah. 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 Whereas he is like, that doesn't really exist. You just, he mm -hmm. said, I think the biggest, maybe the biggest thing he said about this stuff was like the able, the ability to reflect afterwards kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Just like really working hard for a couple of years, not really like looking up and then as you're like ready to go to the next thing looking back and like oh shit look at all this we did all these shows right this album like all of this stuff like that was cool but i gotta move on now like you know yeah <laughs> but just moving but, yeah. forward yeah yeah yes yeah. yeah. so he's he's very i don't know i think i was going to say something about yeah we'll talk about the mindset a little bit um as we go through a couple of his next albums mm -hmm. um but he does every he does do things to just to piggyback real quick like in the moment yeah, and, and and as far as like production, he's never like I I need to do it this way or I have to do it this way. It only works like this or that. Yeah, like he's like I'll try it this way. Sometimes the track will start on a you know a keyboard. Sometimes it'll start all in the DAW. Yeah, um, and he's happy to just really dive into those different ways of making music yeah. um, and taking him to the same point of having a great track at the end. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Anyway, let's move on. That's 2016, his debut release, and it was you know got a lot of acclaim. It was pretty good. Yeah. Um, we already said No Name is on there. Yeah. Another rapper, Twista, is on there. Mm -hmm. And so then that takes us to February, 2017. Right. Where we got a little bit of bad news. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he has a cousin called John Walt. Yeah. And this year, 2017, um, he was stabbed to death. Mm. And that's yeah. I mean pretty intense. Yeah, by a stranger, apparently. Is that right? Was, yeah, that's all I saw about the details of it. But yeah, obviously unexpected. It was a murder. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, his cousin, like that was also the um, group that he formed Pivot Gang with. He was well. a collaborator in Pivot yeah, Gang. Yeah, yeah. So he was doing a lot of music with, this, with him as well. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, I mean, definitely... Is that what sort of went into Care For Me, his next album then? Like yeah. Like lyric, lyrically and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah. Almost directly, a lot of that album is is reflecting on that experience. Yeah. Yeah, he said like, and I think that the issue is, although that was a traumatic thing and he said that was a, a lot of like the lyrical influence in that album. Mm -hmm. He said also he felt like the media kind of like took that narrative away from him a little bit. Whereas he said all the headlines, all the articles about how this album is about grief and trauma. And he said, well, but it's about more than that. <laughs> like he said, when he listens back to it, that's not all he get all he gets from it kind of thing. Right. Like, he was, yeah. I mean, there's like yeah. a sense of, you know, moving through a process and, and being hopeful. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. coming out the other side yeah. after you go through this process. Yeah. yeah. As, as far as I was picking up. Yeah. Which is cool. Cause yeah, it can, it can seem really dark. Yeah. And, and the album cover is kind of dark. It's black and white. And he's kind of sitting 
like in his kitchen and it seems kind of he, he looks a little sad or depressed maybe right um yeah. but the, the whole album he he's too bright and too smart and too forward and positive thinking i think yeah to just come up with an album that just like is negative energy and yeah you know he's trying to again he's a, he's a learner yeah and he's trying to learn through this process of his emotions and and move through his life that way yeah um rather than just being like oh that was sad that was fucked up yeah it was all negative Damn. you know even through the negative there's positive that's what he's saying with the album i think yeah i think it comes i mean authenticity is the major keyword with Salber. And that's like, yeah you know this all day this album really i feel like bucket list project was a little bit more collaborative and less about himself whereas care for me is like probably his first album that is completely him being authentic and honest coming from his own. yeah I, I would agree yeah and like um yeah like you said he learns as he like he uses it's like a cathartic thing he uses um like the lyrics writing to process his feelings mm -hmm. and to express those feelings but also in the process of doing that to hopefully learn from that process as well right so it's very like very well i mean as a crazy perspective i think like that's i mean it's a really great screwed on head yeah. head screwed on perspective yeah <laughs> agree but um yeah i mean so like yeah he said this album's like very sort of detailed and layered and he would hear it and he said you know listeners can get whatever they want from the music he, right all he cares is about is that people feel that he's has his put his feeling into it that he's mm -hmm. actually there and present kind of thing 100 percent but uh but like yeah he said if he was to listen to it he was like you get more than trauma and grief it's detailed there's a lot of layers in there musically production wise and stuff as well so but no um yeah, yeah. so yeah it's a very good um album i think this this album kind of like you were saying it kind of broke through as far as the critics go yeah and this mm -hmm. was like oh, okay everyone would learn who saba is right like you know really authentically you yeah. know that word we keep using yeah um i got a couple of notes on this it was made pretty concisely in a short amount of time yeah yeah um i think three months right yeah, yeah. and i think that was longer than like the previous album for example and yeah. so one cool thing i saw was he had like a hundred beats mm -hmm. before this mm -hmm. just like a you know a library of beats that was being worked on and ideas yeah um, collaborations and stuff and whittled those down into this album yeah so i just think it's a cool yeah, yeah. um thing to know um this guy's another guy who just really works hard and isn't afraid to redo the track and try new things yeah in order to really get what he wants and put out the best thing that he could that's that the vibes with him the most yeah. or that he vibes with yeah um so i mean just impressive how much work goes into something that turns into you know 100 tracks turns into like 10 tracks yeah Oh, it's interesting, yeah, because it was a yeah a long period of time. I guess those beats yeah had come from, but then yeah, literally they said three months to sit down and then process all of that stuff, mm -hmm. like re-listen to those old beats and be like, oh, this one has to be on here, this one has to be on here, right? But then lyrically pulling it all together as well in three months, like, yeah, because um, yeah, a lot of those beats it's not like finished songs. It's just like maybe like a, bar, a few bars, like some loops, some ideas, like, right? And he just has to sort of that's intense. Well, that's I mean, taking you know the yeah. beat to a song, right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's the impressive thing that he does really well. Yeah, and that's actually yeah something to hit on about Saber as well is that he thinks he's not just a rapper like laying like you know I don't know some of these rappers out there just put like monotonous like things on. Yeah, you know he's like thinking about inspired by Bone Thugs Harmony like he's thinking about cadence, he's thinking about patterns. Mm -hmm. He's thinking about choruses and verses like, yeah. and and uh, and really sort of like songwriting is songwriting. Even right. though he's a rapper, he's not just rapping over beats. He's like crafting yeah. songs and that. That's, really that's what I really, yeah. that's why he's, he was in my, that's why I brought, wanted to talk about him today. Yeah. Because I'm not even, I don't come from rap. I've said it. Yeah, you you, yeah. That's why it surprised me. It's like, Jesse doesn't listen to hip hop. I, What's going on? Hey, sometimes <laughs> I do. Sometimes I do. But it's the songwriting that really yeah that, like, i think that's why yeah. i really yeah i listen to the music because he has that aspect that i um can perceive yeah whatever nice. however you want to say it yeah. um but yeah so he, he impresses me and that's why we're talking about him yeah. the one other thing was i thought was cool was this album came out and only four days after the album came out the their tour started for the album right yeah so just yeah <laughs> go 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 just straight 
to release and touring for like two years or something like that. I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we have a track from it though, right? You picked yeah. it up. Let's play a track from this. This is called Life. running away i got demons hunting me i know pop with 25 i know jesus 33 i tell death to keep a distance i think he obsessed with me i say god that's the one i know she would die for me they want a barcode on my wrist to auction off the kids that don't fit their description of a utopia like a problem won't exist if I just don't exist If I grew up without a single pot to piss And pardon me for venting Congress got the nerve to call itself religious Rich just getting richer We just trying to live our life Mama mixed the vodka with the Sprite They killed my cousin with the pocket knife From my uncle on the phone He was gone for more than half my life He got out of year and then he died I was on the road Talking to my father on the phone Left the city when I was just four None of them would get alone Mama begging him for winning coast I was chilling with my niggas poop Now they trying to take his life Don't mean shit to a nigga that ain't never had shit Yeah, life don't mean in the dark fight don't mean fish Oh, ice don't see Ice don't see Ice don't freeze Light don't leave I don't mean light to me Tell me you'll be okay Tell me happier days Tell me that she might be That I won't be alone Tell him I'll be okay When he asks how's my day Tell him that we the same Tell him that we the same I got my granddaddy's soul I met war that's on my mind. I see Walter by the cold. Wish I could switch you with mine. I'm not worried about no rap shit. Distractions or waste of times. I still go to social functions, even though I'm so anti. No, I'm no Rihanna in the court, gonna throw it like Donna. Been down a bit. I just been modeling my whole career as a park was a studio monitor. Shake and I raised the apartment to bond over profit. I made what I made in a lot. Amount of time, the same amount of time you was watching. So stop comparing me to people, no, I am not them. A lot of people dreaming till they shit against shit. That's life, my mom makes it rock with the Sprite Kill my cousin with the pocket knife While my uncle on the phone, he was gone for more than half my life He got out of year and then he died I was on a roll, talking to my father on the phone Left the city when I was just four and then I'm get along Mama begging him for when it goes I was chilling with my niggas poop, now they trying to take his life Life by Saba from his album Care For Me, his second album, but it's probably his most, like, you know, uh, raw from personal piece of work. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, there was some heavy lyrics in there as well. Yeah, you can you can no. hear what he's talking about. He's yeah, talking yeah. about mentioning his cousin. Yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously that's a very dark subject. And him being on the road, like, talking to his dad whilst, you mm -hmm. know, all this is happening to his family. It's like that's pretty raw, but you can tell, like in the lyrics as well, he's also using it to like approach, you know, process. Mm -hmm. You know, like life doesn't mean anything to people that you know. I, I can't. <laughs> I'm not going to quote him verbatim, but it was along those lines. It's like I think he's sort of maybe making a comment that like, you know, at people that don't really value life because mm -hmm. they're not living it or something like that. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's something to really ponder on and think about as well. Like, yeah. So he's like doing a lot, you know, in in these songs and yeah, just very yeah. tasteful. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and the his yeah. the stuff he comes out with is well rounded. You yeah. you can tell he cares about the lyrics, you know, and especially when he's talking about this really emotional stuff. Yeah. Um, and then the track is very good as well. The production is very nice and it, yeah. it matches up with the lyrical content and everything. So yeah, yeah. Uh, just yeah, very good stuff. It's emotional. Um, you know, he's got good flow. His raps are cool. Yeah, and he has good sound. Yeah. So, yeah, that's all I got on that album. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and so a few good things. His latest album came out this year, 2022. Um, been four years, obviously, since the last album. Um, he was on tour for like two years with Care For Me. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, just real quick, um, in 2020, moved to Los Angeles. Right, yeah, yeah. Just uh, to fit that in the timeline there. And also, pandemic happened. Um, right. He made this funny comment as like where the fans are like, you know, everyone, well, everyone's like knows that the pandemic happened to them, but they forget it happened to artists as well. Yeah. <laughs> and so like, you know, 
he was on tour for half of it, then the pandemic, and then, you know, because I think what he meant to that as well, like life happens, like you can't just be, even though we're in lockdown, doesn't mean he can just like spend all his time in the studio. He's going through his own uh, issue response to the pandemic, like we all did mm -hmm. as well. You know? Yeah, no, exactly. Self-reflection, all that kind of thing. And um, yeah, and, and, and coming into this album, a few good things he said that like, it wasn't it like yeah it was he had more time to work on it but it was also like he had to kind of stop and start he said like he had to take time out to relax to not do music to maybe scratch songs and start them again kind of thing mm -hmm. and um and just allowed himself like the luxury of giving himself more time to craft this album i think is yeah. kind of how we put it yeah and i uh, think a lot of people would agree it's it's yeah. his most um, you know, uh, what do you want to call it? Like his best work, maybe right. like his masterpiece up until this point, yeah. like the, the production and the music, it's, it's really tasteful done at a high level, mm -hmm. really quality. Mm -hmm. Um, and then his lyrics are obviously really good too. So just a very well-rounded thing. Yeah. Um, a lot of great features on the album as well. Yeah. From uh, artists like black thought. Yep. Uh, we got G herbo. Mm -hmm. I know black thought. I haven't heard of G herbo, um, or black. Mm. But the B is a the B is a six. Yeah, I've come across a few tracks from Black. Might have, I think I've played a few tracks on the drop. From nice. Him. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, Crazy Bone. Right. And I think Crazy Bone was another person in the Chicago scene that he worked with early on. Right. I think I don't know. Oh, too much. Crazy Bone. No, I think he's from Bone Thugs and Harmony because they said. Oh, that. that that's the connection. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Because they said last like, oh, that must have been a crazy collab to collab with one of you. You know heroes sort of yeah, thing. yeah no exactly and and it's funny because we've talked about on other episodes about like oh you know would you would you collaborate with like your musical heroes Saab is someone that is very much like yes like mm. he would definitely like collaborate with Kendrick like you said earlier um Pharrell um so yeah. you know just Shardy but yeah and he said about Pharrell yeah because like he feels like there's a lot you can learn from him as well like from the perspective of he thinks Pharrell is someone that's just been very authentic mm -hmm. and self-aware of who he is and what he's doing kind of thing and yeah something that Saba likes in these people so yeah I mean if he can get these collabs happening yeah I mean I feel like it's gonna happen yeah yeah, yeah yeah I feel like it's gonna happen this guy's still on his his move up well they and said about manifesting as well I think he manifested the crazy bone collab yeah i said <laughs> well i think this guy's powerful yeah. like that yeah, i think he, yeah. he is tapping into this manifestation stuff and really making things happen for himself yeah in a really yeah. cool way because otherwise he comes from a musical family but he's he's just some kid from chicago right you yeah. know which is very cool yeah um a couple notes on this yeah so this is grappling like lyrically this album's talking about like his own success basically and how to deal with that mm. and then one cool thing, there was two producers on this album, and I think some, they were working on different tracks, but I think two producers were even working on s some individual tracks. Right, yeah, yeah. And so one track, I think it's the track that we're going to end on, Fearmonger. Right, yeah. I think that's what we're, we're going to end on. And, mm -hmm. and they were, I'm sorry, I'm trying to tell this story. Let me back up a second. All right. Because uh, you were saying he's doing different things, like he's in different parts of the country, touring, oh, yeah. starting on the album, stopping the album. Um, and, and some of these tracks were worked on on Zoom, yeah. which I thought was very interesting. Yeah. And so he's like literally talking to these people, building the track on Zoom with these two producers on the internet. Yeah. And like, like he's like rapping there with his microphone and they're showing him a beat mm -hmm. and it's really interesting because he, there was he was saying there's a little bit of a lag in the time yeah and so that was you know obviously affecting his flow and how he's coming in on these tracks mm -hmm. lyrically and vocally um which kind of helped create some cool stuff like happy accidents you could say yeah 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 i heard him talk about that he said it was uh because yeah, there was there was a lag he he was hearing the track more funky than it than it was intended yeah. to be or something and he said he he said he mentioned outcast like he kind of like went out of his comfort zone wheelhouse to like do this thing happy accident yeah he said it ended up sounding great but it wasn't it would have been different if they would just been in the room i think because he wouldn't have had that lag and it wouldn't have. he just wouldn't like, have heard it the same yeah, way yeah, yeah which yeah. is really interesting yeah. it's cool yeah um yeah that's 
but I mean, and and I was gonna say about this album, "Few Good Things" twenty twenty two. This is where I, I this is the first Saba album that I listened to. Mm, okay. So I I got him got into him through this album, and then I went back to the other stuff, and I don't know. It's all good. I would probably yeah. start at the first album if I was gonna ask anybody to where they wanted to start listening. Right. Yeah. Start first one, go to the second one, then go to the third one. Just follow his narrative. Yeah, it's only been a few. Less than ten years, right? All these albums, so, mm-hmm. but yeah, and kind of close together. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And I think each one you could see his his you know step leveling up. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. But mostly, mostly what I got on this guy. Uh, I heard a few things about. Well, his like uh perspective a little bit. Like he he mentioned this thing. He heard a quote, I think it was from The Roots. It might have been either they said it or it was in a song or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's something that resonated with him really early on. But he said even maybe before he started releasing music. And he said their goal for every album was to lose 40% of their fan base. (laughs) By doing something so different and and novel. Yeah. And so basically, like this is like one concept that Saba really takes to heart is it's more important to be authentic, have something to say and have feeling in the music mm-hmm. than anything else. Yeah. Even if that means I have to release like a metal record, like next album to like make this make sense kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, like whatever you got to do to yeah. fulfill that. Yeah. That he, d- feeling. he didn't say about the metal, by the way, I, I added you that. You just, <laughs> just make it stuff up. <laughs> but his cut is, you know, his vibe was basically that, yeah, don't be afraid to try different things. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was like the sentiment of this quote, losing 40% of your fan base is because you're not afraid to like challenge yourself as an artist and do something you wouldn't normally do and challenge the, and not worry about what the fans think or the listeners think as well. Like, mm-hmm. So you're sort of challenging them as well. Um, you know, I, I see, I feel like Radiohead do that really well, like from where they've come to where where the, what they've done through their albums mm-hmm. and i think maybe now that's come to be expected by their fans and listeners you know mm-hmm. um i think damon Armand does that from blur uh and gorillas and all the things he's done like like and and the other takeaway i got from that like damon Armand and all that is like seeing how the importance of not worrying about um holding music back like you should just release stuff because I think it's really interesting for me personally as a music listener to see the evolution of an artist mm-hmm. versus like all the same thing, you know? Right. Um, and I think Saba sort of touched on that notion as well a little bit. It's like, you know, he doesn't want to sound like everyone else, you know, like it's more interesting to be doing your own thing. Totally. And be authentic. Um, and I think he yeah. has, yeah. you can, as you listen through his discography, you can hear yeah. a lot of, his influence in his music yeah, yeah. Uh, um you know it, it, even points where he admits that he's like trying to emulate outcast or something like that yeah but i think he's 100 percent grown out of his influences and he's become saba his own yeah, yeah you know artist in his own right definitely yeah um just by pure like um work ethic yeah and yeah. discipline and just you yeah. know not being afraid to try things and explore yeah you know, and explore your mind and your body mm-hmm. and, and and the music and how that affects everybody around you. Yeah. Yeah, not worrying about the success of things and how you're perceived or the celebrity or any of that crap. Like, Yeah, I know. Uh, and one interviewer yeah. was mm-hmm. asking him, like, he's like, how does it feel to be a celebrity, a full-blown celebrity? <laughs> yeah. and, and he's like, I, I don't know. I don't feel like a celebrity. Mm-hmm. And he was talking about how, like, the Internet has made it so confusing like who is a celebrity mm. like you know everyone's a celebrity mm-hmm. or or nobody is yeah right but like you can like he said he is kind of a celebrity in 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 certain rooms yeah but in other rooms he's a random human on earth yeah and in most places in, on earth he's 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 good he's chilling right like he's not getting hoarded by the paparazzi in every place he goes yeah yeah he's still a little bit you know underground at underground for pop stars yeah yeah and i think like i don't know maybe it's yeah now the internet has sort of confused things a little bit like that because i feel maybe in the past before the internet it was harder to know certain artists Mm -hmm. outside of what was being played 
or promoted to you through radio or mm. magazines or whatever and stuff like that. But now I think it's really easy to like follow a bunch of art. Like there's some artists I think, oh, you know, I'll be really kind of, I don't know if I want to meet them, you know, not starstruck, but just kind of like they're famous to me sort of thing. But yeah. then, you know, there are other people that are like, I've never heard of them. Like, I don't know who that is. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, and that's a cool thing as well. I think maybe we're, you know, we don't need, really need celebrity in this life. I don't think, you know, it's, we just need authentic people like Saba to be making good stuff and inspiring people. Um, it's, it's people like Saba yeah. that are the true influencers. The real, yeah. You know, like and, he's like, he's uh, a, you know, an authentic influencer. Yeah. He's doing it for himself. He's learning and, and growing and figuring out what this all is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he's sharing his process with us. Right. Yeah, yeah. And that's what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm here for it. I love it. Yeah, man. It's good stuff. Good pick. I mean, I think we only scratched the surface a little bit of his outlook on this episode, but. No, I mean, hundred percent. But he has some great interviews out there as well that people can go check out. I would encourage people to yeah. seek that out. Um, yeah. He's got a really cool, chill demeanor. Yeah. Um, and there's a couple, like you said, a couple of really good long interviews where he just goes into depth. In, yeah. in depth about yeah. where he's coming from, where he's at with his mindset and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I mean, definitely recommend, but I hopefully on this show today, talking about Saba, we gave him a, a, a good earnest college try to describe who he is and what he's about. Yeah. We did our best. Yeah. Go check out his albums. I'm going to listen more in depthly. Uh, mm -hmm. some, it's, some of these albums. Yeah. It's definitely yeah. just something good to put on. Yeah. You can put it on your car, put it on while you're doing some chores. Um, it's w really versatile that way. Nice. Yeah. Well, that was yeah. Rooster Grooves. That was Saba. Yeah, that was Saba. <laughs> Thanks for being here, guys. Um, um, let's get out of here. Yeah. If you guys have any uh, corrections or cool stories about Saba, you can hit us up at the email, Jay. Roots to Grooves at signalradio.com, S-I-G-N-L radio.com. Pay the money on the way, it'll lay by the first. Adolescence, I would curse on the way to the church. My career just turned to curse of how I connect the words. I ain't grow up with much of shit, but still it could have been worse. He ain't focused on the pants, he won't get in a purse. I need it all in advance if they book me to work. When we barely had a chance, left the crib on alert. To a crib with alarms and security perks. And security hurts, the same way jury works. So if you're paying the flex, pay your security first. No point in paying for whips to ride a funeral hearse. We be prepared for the best. But also fearing the worst Okay, every nigga that I know is scared of going broke I know if I fall back down Ain't no one there to let me roll Okay, and every nigga that I know takes care of so and so So ain't no option, option, option You best go make more I was top, but once you made money, you be more afraid than the saw. My grandfather drove a Corvette convertible car. He passed away and left his will to the fate of the stars. I made it cool, mm -hmm, off of saying a bar. I was scared to spend it down, like what if I die tomorrow? Will my fam intervene for a bag of the G's and a black Model 3? She's passenger seat. Will my fans leave if I can't put asses in seats? If I log out an app or I lack a retweet, I'm just scared to go back. They didn't have shit to eat. Have my bread go to taxes, the actual thing. Okay, every nigga that I know is scared of going bro. I know if I fall back down, ain't no one there to let me roll. Okay, and every nigga that I know takes care of so and so. So ain't no option, option, option. Let's go make more. Cause we're all gonna be old monsters. I feel all
Roots to Grooves is a production of Signal Radio. For more music and independent culture, visit signalradio.com. That's S-I-G-N-L radio.com.